Yeah, g'day YouTubers, Tinker O'Toole again with another video. In today's session, I'm going to talk about why the left teeth on your chain can be longer or shorter than the right side or vice versa. Why is it that a lot of people can't get the same length on the left and the right? Now, if we're talking about hand filing, depends whether you're swapping using your left hand to file one side and then swapping to the right hand to file the other side that is probably the main reason as to why you get one side longer and shorter because let's say you're a right hander and you're filing with your right hand and then you swap over to your left hand for the other side you'll generally find out that you're stronger in your right hand so if we're going to file a left hand tooth which is a tooth on the outside and i stand behind the chain i can file that quite easily but if I swap to that side, I'm going to use my left hand. But there is an alternative, all as you have to do, that if you swap the chain around to the other side, then I can come from this side with my right hand uh, and file this way. So, yeah, look, it's interesting uh, how people file. A lot of people find out that they can't file in their left hand and they only want to use one hand. So, yeah, it's up to you as to which way you do it, but I find out that if I alternate and turn the chain around because this is a right-hand tooth facing from the back, and I can use a right hand on a right hand tooth. And if I turn it around the other way, that's a left hand tooth. And I feel actually more comfortable doing it this way, right? I do feel much more comfortable. When I turn it around that way, I have to stand at the other end right so now I've got to stand at this end but I that's one way of doing it the other way and a lot of people probably do it this way and this is where the mistake can be made is that if this is the if this end here is the chainsaw power head and that's the end of the chainsaw bar I can file quite comfortably that way, being behind it, and I can alternate that way. Push the chain forwards, file that way, file that way. Look, if you practice it, you have to practice giving the same amount of pressure on the file as the left or to the right. So it's a matter of being aware of the fact that you may be applying less pressure if you're a right-hander, on your left hand, you may be applying less pressure. So just try and think about that next time when you're sharpening, uh, if one side is longer than the other, and just observe what you're doing, and you'll soon find out uh, where you're making a mistake if you observe what you're doing. So next, we'll look at the grinder and show you the biggest mistake people make, having either the left too long or the right side too long. Okay, so now on to the chainsaw grinder. This is where a lot of people make mistakes. And you see a lot of uh, texts in the forums and they might say, I've got a problem. My right teeth are always longer than the left teeth. What am I doing wrong? Is it the chainsaw grinder? Nine times out of ten, it's going to be you, the operator. Very rarely will it ever be the machine. Remember, you as the operator is the person that sets up the backstop. And you as the operator determine how much is ground on the left and how much is ground on the right. So you need to be doing it uniform. So, okay, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to set up your top plate angle. You'll set up your top plate cutting angle. Make sure that you set your depth up as well. The next thing you need to do before you even start setting up the backstop is that take your chain 
have a good look at it and try and find a tooth that's roughly the average length. So this is a 20 inch chain. There's 18 teeth per side. So out of those 18 teeth, you're looking for a tooth that looks like it's roughly the average length. Not your shortest tooth, not your longest tooth, the average length. That's the tooth we're going to mark with red texture. So you'll mark that with red texture. You'll set your backstop up so that when you pull your grinding wheel down, that the grinding wheel just touches the tooth. That's your starting point. You'll start the grinder. You'll look at the tooth. And because you have it set up so that it just kisses the wheel, most likely you'll have to give it a little bit of an adjustment before you take off the right amount of the uh, tooth. Normally, as I said, that should be set at 30 degrees for the top plate. This should be set at 60 degrees. So if you need to take a little bit more, take a little bit more. Now, because that was the average tooth, you should not have to readjust this, right? You should not have to touch it. The last thing you want to be doing is moving it in, out, in, out. That's where a lot of errors come. So if you mark this with a red texture, when you start to go through the other teeth on the same side, whichever side you start first, let's just say you start on the left side first, if you find a tooth that's too short or too long, mark it with a different coloured texture. Continue sharpening the chain. When you finish sharpening the chain, take the chain off, inspect it, and make sure that it doesn't need subs it doesn't need a second pass. If you're not happy with all the teeth that you sharpened, maybe just give it a quarter of a turn and do it a second pass. Right? And the teeth that you did mark, either they're too short or too long then you can start to do them. Now, when you finish, this is where the mistake can happen. A lot of people don't check for the average size tooth. They might start with the shortest tooth or the longest tooth. And what they actually do, and I've seen it happen quite a lot, when they finish doing one side, they'll move this to the other side like that, then they'll start grinding without even checking. So when you go to the other side, you've got to do exactly the same thing. You need to take the chain off, go through, pick out the average length, which should be very similar to the same side as the other side, mark it with a red texture. For those teeth that are too short or too long, mark that with a uh, black texture as you're, during your sharpening process. When you're finished, then you can adjust for those tooth that was either too long or too too short what they normally tell you to do is to keep them all the same length this is the ideal situation but it's not the most practical because you'll find out no matter how good a chainsaw grinder is you'll always find out that there'll be a discrepancy even up to a millimeter sometimes a brand new chain out of the box quite normal to get a half a millimetre difference between the longest and the shortest on the left side and the right side. So it'll never be, it'll never be much better than that, about half a millimetre. So why they're telling you to try and keep them roughly the same length, because most people are using a raker gauge like this, and this is a constant depth gauge, which means it will only keep the differential between the highest and the lowest point of the tooth at 0.65 of a millimetre. Now, for those that are not too sure what I was just saying then, is that 0.65 millimetre means that the height between the highest point here and the highest point here is 0.65 of a millimetre. So therefore, if you're using that type of raker gauge, then you want the left tooth and the right tooth, all the teeth. There's all the teeth you want the same length approximately. However, if you're using a progressive depth gauge, it doesn't matter what length the teeth are because what this progressive depth gauge does is set the depth of the raker based on the length of the tooth. So this can compensate for different tooth lengths. The different the tooth length, the different the raker height will be. 
And that's why these are superior. These were invented by Ray Carlton in the uh, early 60s. This type of gauge here, the constant depth gauge, was invented by Joseph Cox, Portland, Oregon. And it had a worldwide patent in the early 50s. And nothing's changed from then to now. And they still sell that type of gauge. But this is a type of gauge it should be using. For those here in Australia, you can get this from your local stool dealer, uh, Husqvarna dealer. Uh, they sell them as well. If you're over in America, you won't be able to get them. I don't know why, but you can get West Coast saws over in America. So you can get on their website and they sell a progressive depth gauge that you can order online and get them sent to you or go to your Husqvarna dealer and get the Husqvarna one. So just to briefly recap, the grinders, if you've got different lengths from the left and the right, it's not the grinder's fault. It's the operator, the human error. Just revise what you're doing and making sure that you're taking the same amount off the left teeth and the right teeth and you're setting the backstop exactly the same depth. Just revise your sharpening methods. And just remember that when you swap from the left to the right side, make sure that you do readjust and set up again. Don't just instantly assume that the left side and the right side are exactly the same. That's where the mistake a lot of people make is swapping from side to side without recalibrating the backstop uh, to the relation uh, coming in contact with the wheel. It's not an issue if the backstop is not touching the wheel, but it's certainly an issue if you swap to the left to the right and it's touching too much on the wheel, it'll start to grind off more. And if you continue doing it that way, an example is, I always start on a left-hand tooth, or sorry, a right-hand tooth, because I can see the side plate and the top plate, whereas on the left-hand tooth, I can only see the inside of the side plate. So I generally start on, uh, I set up on this side first, and when I swap to the other side, it just means that you've got to set up your backstop with your grinding wheel, same procedure. So that's the mistake people make. It's not the grinder. It's human error. It is you as an operator. It's just not doing it correctly. So just revise what you're doing and, and check what you're doing, and you generally will find out that you weren't adjusting this correctly and that's why you got your variation you're in control of the grinder the grinder is not an automatic thing you set how much it grinds off it the grinder doesn't set that so if you've got a mistake it's because you made the mistake so let's just get that uh quite clear i hope that information helps because i know and i've done it myself when i first started uh using grinders I found out that I was grinding too much on one side to the other side because I was switching the the movable vice from left to right without readjusting and setting up. So that's the mistake a lot of people make and that's the reason for it. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.